guys. I'm excited to do a Q&A with you today. Hi, I see a couple of you guys there. Um, I just wanted to kind of follow up with the last uh, live video that I did um, when I was doing the takeover for the Passion Color Joy account. And um, it was so much fun and I loved answering your guys' questions and I thought, hey, I should do it on my account. Um, I would love to just kind of take any questions you guys have and let you know about my studio practice and about my work and just have a chat because I think that's fun. <laughs> so um, I had a list of questions that I had uh, sent to me just in the comments of my photos when I was um, doing announcements for this session um, that I can start out with a few of them and then feel free to type in your questions. I would love to answer while you are here and then, um, whoops, let's close that. Then um, I can finish out, like fill in in between with these questions. I want to make sure to answer my list that I have here as well uh, for the folks who took the time to ask in advance too. But um, so I'll just start with this one and then feel free to type in your questions. Um, so Melissa Harrell Art asked, um, do you license your work? If so, how did you get started with it? And I actually have not licensed my work yet. I have directly sold for, um, like mostly it's just work like paintings that I've just sold to individual collectors. Um, and then also I, uh, I've sold directly to folks who wanted to buy a pattern and I've also done it like on a commission basis, um, or more, almost more like a trade, like they gave me something for free. So I gave them a pattern and then they also like threw in, Oh, you'll get a percentage if we make some money off of this. So I haven't done official licensing yet. That's something that's like incredibly scary to me, but because I love pattern design, I want to do, uh, I want to learn more about licensing and I want to do it. So, um, that's kind of this year's project is researching licensing. So if you, any of you guys have any good suggestions, I would love to know. Um, but that's that question. So then Cheryl Lopez said, I recently saw a small sample of your color palette. Would you share? And could you tell me what you mean? What color palette were you thinking, Cheryl? Um, I'm not sure which color palette you mean. If it is, was it like colors I mixed in the studio? Um, so go ahead and type in and let me know what you meant by that and then I can answer your question. Um, the Inky Pinky asks, will you be doing any online classes? And that actually was one of the questions that I had, whoa, rock the camera, had um, on my list. So I have had quite a few recently um, people asking if I would do online classes or if I do them. And honestly, that thought had never occurred to me before. And I was like, oh, online classes, that sounds so big and official. But actually, I am planning on doing one. I'm planning on videoing. Uh, so it would be a course that you, or a, a lesson that you would buy. Um, so it wouldn't be a live lesson. But um, so videoing like a step by step, like here, how, how we're going to make a specific painting and then I would pass on so I probably beginner level and then maybe getting um, more advanced in further courses but starting out like my workshops I'm doing right now are very beginner friendly so I want people to just feel comfortable coming in try something new never picked up a paintbrush before yay I'm glad that you would like doing that um, I think it's Laura <laughs> pink pop school studio unless it's your sister um, so yeah, I am planning on filming that sometime in the next coming months. Um, I have several live workshops scheduled already for the next coming months. And so I just have to find some time in between those and figure out how to do it all myself. <laughs> um, oh, good. Awesome. Hi, Laura. Um, yeah, so that is the answer to the online question. But I would love also to know... And if you guys want to mull it over and email or message me later or mention, mention here what you would like the first class to be, would you like me to do florals or succulents or something like that? Um, so yeah, subject, I would love to know. But it would be basically like a step-by-step -step sort of a class where you watch my hands and I am painting and I am talking while I'm mixing colors and imparting like information. But then you can also see me work through an entire painting. Um, Okay, so Cheryl said, I believe it was a picture on Instagram. I'm trying to think of what picture 
what color palette that would be. Let me go look real quicky. I'll pull up my Instagram on my big computer and see if I can... I'm not sure if I can go to Instagram on my phone and not kill this video. So let's go look. A color palette. Oh, by color palette, do you mean like a paint palette that I put my paint on? I was I was thinking like color swatches. Um, let me go back. So if you mean a sample of my color palette. So if you mean by um, the by what I mix my paint on, I use like a paper palette. So I'll shoot it down here. So I use this, it's like a disposable paper palette. So it's just like a pad of paper that you can rip off pages. So it's like wax paper that you mix with your brush or with a palette knife on. I hope that answers your question. Um, so you guys are saying florals and succulents. Yay, I'm so glad that you're excited about this. Um, yeah, I'll share more as it's developing right now. It's like all in my head. I have not done any like planning out. Um, I know you have to like come up with a shot list maybe. I, want, I would love to have like a view from above and a view from the side. So I have to find a second camera for all that. But yay, florals and succulents. Can I do both, Laura asked. So yeah, I could totally do like an arrangement that has both of them in there mixed together. I was actually thinking that would be fun for one of my live workshops because I've only done a succulents only class and then a florals only class but mixing the two together would be really fun too awesome okay um so i'll read another question off my list so melissa tullis art asked um i would love to know what started you on your art journey and how you arrived where you are today she says that as, as an emerging artist i find myself stuck in this land of limbo um so let's see what started me on my art journey so i I basically have been doing art my whole life. I started as a kid. I was at, I've been listening to the Jealous Curator podcast and she's always like, were you an art kid? So um, I was an art kid and uh, I drew and painted a ton during like, high, uh, just whenever I was a young kid and then middle school, high school, um, just on my own. I had a whole little art station set up at home anyway. And then I went to college for painting and drawing. So I've always done art is my thing. Um, and so I decided when I graduated, I, um, I, at first I wanted to be a children's book illustrator. So I did some freelance projects in that a little bit, but, um, then decided that I needed to find something that had a quicker turnaround because the children's book illustration just, you put so much work up front. Just the whole book process is a long process. And so, um, yay, team art kit. Um, yeah, so the process of books is very long and I was like, I need to make some money. So I decided to teach. <laughs> and so I taught at a private art studio for kids, which I loved. And they actually had a great training program for teachers as well to kind of, even if you had an amazing portfolio, they, you may not necessarily know how to explain art to other people, which is definitely where I was at at that point. Like I knew my stuff, but I didn't know how to teach it. And so they trained me on how to teach and explain and really bake it, uh, break it down to like the very basic steps of painting and drawing. Um, and so I did that for four years and then I, um, I, then I had my daughter and she's two years old now. So two years ago I decided I, I always knew I wanted to stay home with my kids. And so, um, I decided to quit that job, stay home with my daughter. And then when I had her, it was very interesting. I was not expecting this, but when I had her, I really just got this like desire to make something out of my art, like make an art career of some sort. And so, um, I thought I actually had no idea whether like having a kid was going to just like kill all my creativity. I was definitely like the crazy sleep deprived person for a long, like a couple months. But, um, I really felt that having those time constraints of like, oh, now you can't just make things here and there and like doodle around. You have to actually like be purposeful with your time if you want to like do anything. And so, um, yeah, I got like, I got listening to the Being Boss podcast and that really, um, that's more, that's a creative entrepreneur podcast. They're more in the like service 
I would say, in like coaching industries, but they talk to like creative entrepreneurs in general. And so like while I was walking my baby in my stroller, I'd be listening to all these creative entrepreneur podcasts and that really like got me excited to make some sort of business out of my art. Um, and so I just sort of started DIYing it a little bit. Like I read a ton of articles, I read a ton of like blog posts and things like that and just listened to a ton of people and just started, started hearing like recurring themes of like you need to have a social media presence and you need to have a presentable website and you need to have good images and things like that. So I would say I um, just soaked up a lot of information and then just started putting things out there and having a kid and sitting around and like nursing her all day long or not all day long, but you know, for hours and hours together, I um, was on my phone a ton. So I got really into Instagram and I would like start becoming friends with people and commenting on their photos and being like more active. And so I think that just having a bunch of like sitting around time at the beginning got me onto that. Um, and yeah, I just started trying to be really consistent on the images that I put out. Um, for a while I was only doing it once every couple days, but then I kind of buckled down. I was like, okay, I'm going to try to post once a day, at least like weekdays and try to have like good quality of my images and try to like just be consistent. And I think that is like the key consistency. And it really like last year was very quiet on the art sales front near the end of the year it was started picking up but I'm like really new at this guys so I'm like eh, and I hopefully gonna be like gonna keep you know getting more and more um successful and more business as as time goes by but this year I feel like there's been a lot of payoff for all the work that has been happening or that I've been doing uh last year and the year before that so I would just say like stick with it focus on like quality of the th the information and the words and the images that you're putting out there and um, just stick with it because it's not going to be fast and I definitely had some times where I was very frustrated and I was like okay I'm you know seeing all these beautiful artists with all of their amazing work and they seem to be like selling out every collection as soon as they post it like five minutes after they post their collection and I just had to realize that that's them like five ten years down the road from where I am so I just had to be okay with that um yeah so that is basically like my little art journey to today yeah Okay, um, hope that answered your question. Good, good. Um, so then, let's see, I have another question on my list, and feel free to type in questions, guys, and I will answer yours. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, let's see, so Lady Warbird asked, um, I was curious how you moved into and established selling canvas pieces as opposed to prints. So, um, when I first started out, I was on Etsy, and um, I, I did greeting cards and I did original paintings and I did like one art print. <laughs> and honestly, the reason I haven't done art prints more yet is because it just is, you have to buy them in bulk. And it almost for me to get started with that is a bigger investment than just painting originals where I just have to buy one canvas and I paint it and I hope someone buys it. And so, um, like buying a large enough amount and having to invest all of that just and also like working on getting the colors correct which is a whole um a whole process in and of itself so um yeah that's basically the only reason that I haven't really tackled uh tackled prints more I would like to because I know as like I would like to have more than one child. <laughs> I would like to have a growing family and I know that I can't probably keep up the pace of my production with another young child um, if that happens down the road. And so I would love to have more things in my shop that are just, you know, being able to sell and send out and not put as much time into them. Um, so anyway, that's kind of my thoughts on art prints. So basically I just do originals because that's what's easiest and most time efficient for me at this point. Um, okay, so Molly and Cooper says, do you have a set number of pieces you try to put out per month? I haven't gotten that, uh, that organized yet. Um, I kind of, I have, like, set, 
like studio times. Like I know I have about like three, three and a half hours a day that I can do things in. Um, and so I just try to get done what I get done in that time and I'm pretty flexible. So like, uh, this year actually has been amazing. I've been getting so many commissions and they've just been kind of like coming in one after another. And honestly, you guys, I had not really gotten commissions at all, like except every once in a while, like years in between them. And so I'm like super excited by that. And I would love commissions to be like a big regular part of what I do. So um, anyway, that's kind of sidetracked just my, like on the side, well, my personal work, I guess you could say. So I try to like, get in a piece here or there in between just like moving on to the next commission. So I'm on my last one right now. I'm about to begin. And then after that, then I would love to start a more of a collection where I would make like a whole load of paintings and then put them out on my website all at once instead of the slow trickle that I've been doing recently. Um, yeah, so I'm not super, I'm not super, um, organized or like, strategic about the number that I get out. I just try to do as much as I can in my time. Um, so then the Inky Pinky asked, what made you move from Etsy? So that's a good question. Um, I, I was on Etsy for about a year, I think. And at that point, I felt like I was, I considered myself part of the handmade community as opposed to like fine art. And I was making like I guess if you scroll back on my Instagram feed long enough, you can find. I was making stuffed animals, guys. <laughs> I was making stuffed animals and I was also making paintings, like more monogram paintings, where it was like a letter with my florals around the outside, like a wreath. And um, so I just had a mixture and I was way more uh, interacting with handmade people on Instagram and reading a bunch of like handmade maker sort of articles and blogs and things like that. And so... Um, I was on Etsy because it was very low bar of entry, which is amazing. You just put your stuff out, you pay 20 cents a piece, and then if it sells, then you pay a commission. Um, but then as I just sort of grew in my personal style and then honed in on what I really wanted to be doing, which was painting, um, I was like, these stuffed animals are too frustrating. I'm not like naturally a sewer and that isn't my passion. So I was like, I want to paint. So then I focused more on painting, but then I was just getting to the point where I really wanted my branding to be cleaner and more cohesive and I wanted more control. And then I also felt a little weird putting, I guess you could call it like more fine art rather than handmade things um, on Etsy where sellers weren't necessarily pricing what their work was worth. And so like things would be like, popping up at the bottom of my shop, it'd be like, hey, you know, um, you could also buy this painting for $10, you know, not necessarily that that exact thing was happening to me, but you could float around, a buyer could float around Etsy and just kind of price shop instead of saying like, hey, this is a painting from somebody I really love and it's worth what it's priced, you know, I just felt like it was a little... I don't know, it was a little difficult for me to get my head around that I was like trying to sell paintings in the hundreds of dollars where people were selling their paintings for cheaper. Um, so anyway, but that was one, that was one element of it. The other element was I really wanted to just have somebody be able to go to my website and everything be there for them. They could look at my portfolio, they could see my blog, they could see my shop, they could read my about page, just have everything wonderful all like have ultimate control over it all. <laughs> so anyway, that was, um, that was basically my thought process. Um, and I don't really, I don't mean to be bashing Etsy at all. It's like does amazing things for some makers, but I just kind of decided that I wanted to go like my own website route and have my own domain name and everything like that. Um, yeah. So then art by Kristen says, thank you for your honesty. You're welcome. Um, yeah, so feel free to type in any other questions. Um, I'll get another one. So Grace Vinker, I think. Sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. Um, so Grace asks, how long did it take you to develop your personal style? So um, for most of my painting life, um, oh good, I'm glad I said it right. Um, for most of my painting life or career or whatever you want to call it, I didn't really have what I would consider a personal style. I, I 
I loved painting landscapes and things like that when I was in school. Everything I did was very like oriented around nature. So it was landscapes. It was, it was like flowers. It was, um, trees, nature subjects. Anyway, um, so I was always very nature oriented, but I did a lot more like realistic sort of paintings, more like from photos where, you know, it was very true to life. Um, and so when I started stocking up paintings for my Etsy shop, I decided I was going to really try to buckle down and come up with a look that I felt like was unique to me. And, um, so I like purposefully set out cause I knew I never had like a specific look that I really felt like was me. And so, um, I... I was also studying pattern design at the time and getting really influenced and inspired by other pattern designers and just by that whole thought process of like when you're designing a pattern you're like puzzle piecing elements and you're not necessarily it depends on the pattern but my personal style was more like non overlapping elements so they were all like fitted together but they weren't necessarily all layered on top of each other so I started playing with that in my paintings and being way more graphic with my shapes and not like even I didn't really even blend colors together all that much in my paintings at that point um so I just sat down and I was like I'm gonna create a body of work I'm gonna make like nine paintings which is not all that many but it was more than I had ever made like in an actual um series I guess you could say so I just sat down and I like did the same look for all of them like varied the flowers and the color palettes but I like did a lot in that same style and then I was like oh you know what this is a look that's unique to me I'm gonna keep rolling with it and then my look has just kind of evolved and changed as I have experimented and grown in my painting but um I felt like that really kick-started me like saying even if I'm getting a little sick of this, I'm just going to keep doing it and keep doing it and then like adjusting and changing as time goes by slowly, but like sticking with a look. So that's kind of how I, um, how I developed my personal style. I know everybody has a really different way that they will find their style. And for some people, it takes a really long time. For me, I kind of like hit upon a look that I did for a while, but then I also it's definitely grown and evolved and changed. So you can take a look back like in my early images too in Instagram and see um, how that look has changed. Um, last year I decided I wanted to do a painting challenge and get way more painterly with my brush strokes. And so that kind of turned into what I'm doing now. Um, okay, so let's see. Art by Kristen um, asked, how did you pick what web server to use? Um, I use Squarespace and I had honestly just heard a ton of uh, commercials for it on the podcast I listen to. And so, and they also very like aimed it towards creative people. And so um, I chose Squarespace. I think I was talking with a friend who was also investigating WordPress and Shopify, I think at the same time. And we just kind of talked about like what rates uh, you know, what percentage they take out of your sales, um, what your sort of startup costs are and things like that. I, I knew I didn't want to do WordPress because I didn't want the responsibility of having to like build it from the ground up and then also keep updating everything. Cause I know you have to like update your plugins and things like that. Um, it's just a little bit more nuts and bolts than I wanted to take on at that point. And so, um, Squarespace was more, they they call it like drag and drop. It's actually not as simple as it sounds because I was just helping my sister set up a Squarespace and she was like, this is not intuitive for me at all. Help me figure it out. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm really familiar with it now. So it's easier to put things together. But when I started out, it was still a little overwhelming, but I just love like the clean look that you could get really easily with that. Um, and so, yeah, that was how I chose Squarespace. Um, Anita808 asked, how did you feel about selling digital files or how do you feel about selling digital files on Etsy instead of prints? I may be looking into it. I actually did think about that. Um, I think that that's totally fine. Um, why did I decide against that at the, I think it was just because I... I think I just never really got around to doing it. I just sort of kept making originals and selling them. I'm trying to think of what my thought process was. I think also digital selling digital prints is appeals to a certain market. 
and it depends on how wide you want your brand to be. So there are like I would say digital prints like or digital downloads of your art is like at the very most like mass market tier if you want to call it that the most accessible the cheapest thing like moms can go on buy a print print it out at Staples hang it in their nursery the next day like it's so accessible and fast um, and inexpensive so I think if you want your brand to encompass like I'm selling digital prints through I'm selling like high quality prints I'm gonna mail to you through I'm gonna sell like original art that's unique and it's gonna be higher priced. Um, I think you just have to think about what you want your brand to encompass and I think at that point I just wanted to focus more on trying to get my original art traction and trying to just kind of focus on that segment of the market and of those like potential customers. So I just decided, oh, I think throwing in a digital print would just like dilute the water for me at that point. And I just really haven't revisited after that. So that was kind of my thoughts. Um, but I don't think that it's a, it's not a bad thing at all. I think it just depends on like how, how many different tiers you want to offer your art in. Um, so then Pink Popsicle Studio says, do you have a favorite brand of paint for certain colors? Um, so I talked about, last time I did this, I talked about all my types of paint, but since most of you guys probably weren't there, I'm going to share a couple of my favorites. So I think this is like my dark little secret. <laughs> so for two colors, I use Liquitex Basics, which I know are like the cheapest of the cheap. Um, but I got them when I was first starting out and I really actually like the colors and they do what I want them to do and so I'm happy with them. So I use Lixico Liquitex Basics for, oh, I forget how you say this, it's quinacridone magenta. It's like that cute word that I have never heard said out loud, so I'm not sure. So magenta, because it's like a nice blue sort of a magenta. And once I run out of it, I might try to find a high qual higher quality brand that has that same like essence of that bluish sort of magenta. Um, and then I also love their cadmium orange hue. Now the color's not really coming across, but it comes out more like a pinky orange. And I honestly haven't been able to find an orange that has the same pigment number. So they say it on the back. It's, um, we're getting really like into it guys. It's Parole PO73. So I haven't been able to find a, sh a paint on the shelf other than a really, really expensive golden paint, a uh, golden brand paint that has that exact same pigment in it. And I bought another orange, another orange or two, and I just haven't been happy. They come out more brown um, the earthy sort of color of orange and so I just really love this color and it makes it like a a pinky almost it's like almost more on the neon it's not neon but it just gets a certain kind of like pinky orangey look that I love so those are two those are like my bottom of the barrel brand um and then mostly my other what other ones do I just love 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 well I will say I got let's see if I can find it here I got Golden's Cadmium Yellow uh, Medium, and that one is wonderful. I love Cadmium Yellow Mediums versus Lights because they just have that warmth, that like slightly more golden warmth to them. And ooh, Golden brand. It was so nice. It's so, I'm almost done with it. Um, it uh, is just like so heavy body thick and just a little bit of it just changes your color completely so you don't have to use that much. So I love that one. Um, let's see. I also have been using, I got these in college, but I'm still working through them because you buy such bigger ones, Nova Colors. And I'm using Nova Colors Thalo Deep, Bl Thalo Blue Deep. And I really like it. It's, it's, um, basically what I use for all of my dark blues. Sometimes I'll mix a couple other colors with it to just change its quality a little bit, but straight up it's, I love that one. Um, Okay, so let's see. So those are some of my favorite paints. Okay, so Melissa Tullis Art asks, what are your favorite podcasts? Um, so, gosh, I've gone through so many phases of podcasts where I kind of like listen to them all and then move on to a whole new set. Um, being Boss, I would say I will credit them with being like my huge inspiration for starting my business. So if you need like just some like hardcore inspiration, start at the very beginning. 
and just kind of listen through. They um, start out more basic and then they get way more like deep into the complexities of like having a bigger business. Like they'll talk about like email list segmentation and like things like that that I don't do at all. I have an email list. I'm proud that I have an email list at this point. Um, but yeah, so Being Boss is great. Um, right now, I still listen to Creative Pep Talk. Um, guys, you got to check it out. So his name is Andy Miller, and he is an illustrator, but then he also just talks about really like the essence of creativity and how to find your creative voice and things like that so it can apply to a bunch of different art disciplines. But um, he's so fun. He's so quirky, and he's very, very, I guess he wouldn't mind me calling him sweet. He's like a very sweet person. And so he is very encouraging and he just really wants to like put his expertise and his information out into the world to encourage other artists. And it, his podcast deals more with, I would say like the fundamental issues of creativity rather than necessarily your creative like issues of business. So I really like that because when I'm getting tired of listening to a ton of creative business things, I will just listen to him because it has nothing to do with business most of the time. So that's nice. Um, yeah, you're welcome, Anita. I'm glad that that helped about the paint. Um, oh, I, I will add to the paint thing. These aren't particular like colors that I buy this brand because I love the particular color but for the most part the biggest major can't put my words together the majority of the paints I use are Galleria uh, Windsor and Newton's Galleria acrylic line and then also um Grumbacher's Academy so I know these are both like student grade brands but they really work well for me and they're at an affordable price point so I'm not ashamed to use them. Um, I am trying to phase in more of the Liquitex uh, professional and then I'm gonna start phasing in some Goldens too. Golden brands just because their pigments like are unmatched so I just love 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 those. Um, yeah you're welcome. Um, yeah then Melissa says thank you for the podcast. Um, I'm trying to think of one more. I feel like I should give you three. So there's Being Boss, Creative Pep Talk. What's a third one that I love listening to? I feel like I've, I've kind of phased out. I did listen to, um, Elise Gets Crafty for quite a while. Oh, and Create and Thrive. So those are two more like handmade maker, uh, podcasts, but I still listen to them. I don't think Elise Gets Crafty is putting out episodes anymore, but Create and Thrive is. And they still have good information, um, even across disciplines, like even if you're more of like a fine art painter, listening to handmade podcasts is great. You can get information from them too. And they're both really sweet, nice ladies, and I like listening to their voices. <laughs> I would love to hear your guys' podcast recommendations too. You should like message those to me because I think this feed will go away. Um, okay, so then Anita808 asked, do you add medium? So the only medium I use um, is Liquitex's Ultra Matte Gel. Um, I love this one for body. I just, it adds matte body, not gloss body. Um, and I use it, I don't use it in all of my, all of my layers of my paintings, but I'll use it. So say like for this little guy, I'll paint all the leaves, I'll paint the background. And then for these like top strokes, where you can see that they're raised, I'll mix it into that color and then do those finishing strokes to have that thickness sitting on top. When you mix the matte gel into um, into it, it into the paint, it makes your layers thicker and I don't know, gushier or squishier or something like that. So like if you're trying to paint more layers on top, you're almost like carving down into what you had already. And I don't really like that feeling. So I paint thinner at the beginning and then layer like thicker as I go up. So that's the, that's the one medium that I've used so far and I really like it and it does what I want and I haven't really, ooh, experimented all that much. Um, oops, close that. Um, <clears throat> so Lisa's Balcony asks, how's your daily routine? How many hours do you spend working on your paintings? Um, routine wise, I have a routine basically because I have a child that I <laughs> am a stay at home mom with and so she dictates my routine so, um, I like to get in, I found after I got through like the sleep deprived phase of early motherhood that I loved getting up before my kid got up 
because it made me not feel like I was starting off my day like, okay, what are we doing? What are we, like, with the baby monitor, like, waking me up, roll out of bed, take care of the baby, just, like, all that. I got some time just to be creative at the beginning of the day before she woke up. So, um, I've, I've kind of done that on and off throughout the two years that she's been with us. Um, so right now I wake up, let's see, I wake up about an hour before she wakes up. So she wakes up around seven. So I wake up around six, maybe give or take a little bit. Um, and then I will work for about an hour in my, in my studio. And I have, this is my studio. I have a room in our home. That's my studio. And it's also our office and our storage, <laughs> but I, I, it's my studio. Um, so I'll come in and I'll do computer things or I'll do things that don't, I'll paint. I have a light that is like a daylight light bulb that I can paint if I want to, but daylights like real daylight is still better. So I try to save my nice daylight hours for painting. Um, so let's see. Uh, yeah, so I'll get up, I'll do some computer, maybe pack an order, do whatever is like whatever I feel like in the morning. And then, um, when she goes down for her nap after lunch, she is an amazing napper. So she takes two and a half to three hour naps every day. And she has like, once she's gone down to one nap, it's been basically three hours, which I know I'm amazingly blessed to have that. Um, and so, yeah, uh, so I basically just do my thing during her nap time. Sometimes I'll have to, you know, do other home related cooking things, but, um, most of the time I try to save that for my art and then I'll, uh, stop when she wakes up and then we'll kind of do our dinner, uh, making dinner, dad come home, eating dinner, going to bed routine. And then if I have something that's pressing all, or I just like, I'm so excited about I can't not do it I'll do it after dinner while my husband's just like hanging out um watching tv or he loves playing um he has like video games or games on his phone that he is like his hobby so he'll do those while I'll do some of my art in the evening sometimes um yeah so that's basically my day so I get like I would say I get like four solid hours of baby free time um, or toddler free time every day. Uh, and then it just depends on if I have all of that for art or only part of that for art. Um, yay. Okay. Let's see. You're welcome. I'm glad those helped you guys. Um, oh, cool. So Lisa's balcony off to check out honest designers podcast. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. I use a pun. Like I have a basket here. I'll show you guys. <laughs> here's my paint basket or my painting cart so I just have like a ton of different things in here that I have like some old ancient Liquitex that's still good that I'll use every once in a while so it's a total mix and match and you just kind of collect right like you don't want to throw it away and I have a whole drawer full of like more crafty paints that are like um whatever, just craft store those little like short bottles that I have ever since I was a kid. So I just save those for projects. Not, not my like nice paintings, but I'll do them with my daughter or things like that. Um, sweet. Yeah, I know the three hour nap, like I <laughs> some of my mom friends are just like, ah, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, let's see if I have any other questions. Oh, where do you buy your canvases and what's your favorite kind? Um, so I, I buy my canvases right now, um, from Michaels or Dick Blick, actually. I love gallery wrap canvases. So it's like the one and a half inch sides, um, the thicker profile so that you can just hang them on the wall and not worry about framing. Um, if there was a client that really wanted to frame the piece after they got it, I would buy a specific canvas, you know, that has that thinner, um, uh, the thinner profile to it. But, uh, yeah, so I mostly just buy them, the ones at Michael's when they're heavily on sale. And I've heard like multiple people say they do the exact same thing. Yeah. Yeah. See you guys. Um, so yeah, I'll just wait till they have like their 60% off or 70% off sale. And then I'll buy a load. I was at a point like, earlier on this, even this year where it was like, Oh, I'll just use a coupon and buy one. But now I wait for the sales. <laughs> so yeah, those are the ones I use. Um, I've been, 
I've been having some thoughts. I'm not exactly sure what, I haven't come to a conclusion on, um, what are they called? It's when it has the rubber gasket, um, on the back. Ooh, I'm forgetting the name guys. Um, it's this. So I use the kind that are like folded in and are, have like that rubber strip that's stapled down. Um, ah, I can't think of the name, but, uh, there's those versus like back stapled where it's just folded around entirely around the backside and then stapled on. And I've actually been reading in some forums recently that people are more into the back stapled because the gaskets can tend to loosen up over time. I've had some for years and years and years that had never done that, and I've never heard anybody I've sold a painting to have an issue with that. So I've never seen it personally, but I've just kind of heard it floating out there. So I don't know, I might try buying back stapled more or phasing into those, but at this point, um, yeah, the other ones seem have never done anything bad on me, so I've buy those. <laughs> but I do love the gallery thickness ones because they just have a wonderful like weight and body to them. Um, let's see. Uh, the Inky Pinky says, what are your favorite colors to paint with? Um, I kind of have a set, a set, uh, color palette, I guess you could say that I just, I tend to use like almost all of them in every painting that I do. So I have white, I have a cadmium yellow medium, I have a yellow ochre. I have some sort of magenta or pink. Um, then I have permanent green light, which is like that guy. The, like a really, really like bottle green. <laughs> um, a phthalo green, a phthalo blue, an ultramarine blue. And I think that's it. Yeah. I think that's basically my palette and that's the palette that I give my students for my workshops too because I feel like you can accomplish anything with that palette <laughs> basically and so that's just kind of what I've worked into using I don't use a ton of specialty colors that are really like off the wall like I feel like my palette that I use aren't like super specialty um so I can make a bunch of specialty colors with those colors. So I'm just happy with those and I kind of just stick with them. Every once in a while I go and I look at all those amazing colors hanging there on the rack and I go, oh, that green is so amazing. And then I was like, oh, well, I can just make that green out of these two colors that I already own. Oh, okay. You know, but there are, that's not entirely true. There are some greens that I cannot do because I cannot make them with, I, with what I have um, that are more like the Kelly green color. So I'm thinking of buying a tube of Kelly green because I haven't been able to make that color. Um, yeah, so those are, that's my general color palette. Um, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll be sure to repost this if it saves correctly to my phone. I'm going to post this video on my blog, um, Anita, so that you can watch the whole thing. Um, Sweet. Oh, thank you guys. Uh, yeah, yeah. So Pink Popsicle Studio sales are the way to go. So then um, Rana Torres photo asked, have you ever scanned a painting to the computer and, and digitaled it to bulk print it? So we talked about this a little bit with the prints. Um, I haven't, I haven't done prints of my work very much. I did one one off like that wasn't even in my current style a couple years ago and printed that. Um, uh, yeah, so I do scan my art quite often to do patterns with my paintings. And also, um, what else do I scan it for? No, it's mostly for my patterns or if I want to like make an image that has like elements of my art in it and then with like text over it or something like that, I'll scan or I'll photograph. Mostly scan though for my patterns. Um, yeah, so I love like doing things with my work in Photoshop and in Illustrator and, um, yeah, turning my paintings into patterns mostly, but I haven't ever like scanned specifically for a print in my current style. Yeah, so let's see. Tell us your website and blog. Um, so my website is juliemarriottart.com. And my blog is on my website. So it's just like a tab on there. Um, I hope that's what you were asking, right? <laughs> um, 
Okay, so let's see. I'm just gonna go down my list. So I only have, okay, so I answered the online classes question already and then Pink Popsicle Studio asked what brushes do I use? Um, and so, oh good, I'm glad I answered your question, Melissa. Um, so the brushes that I use, I feel like are kind of like my paints. Like I've just sort of grown into having this big old collection and they're motley and, but they do what I want to do. <laughs> so, um, I have one, this one's a Princeton brush. And honestly, I'm not a huge fan of Princeton. At least, I don't know if they do higher quality brushes, the affordable, I guess these are student grade ones. They've had the enamel crack off the handles a lot on me, at least with these turquoise color ones. This one is held up. I don't know why. Or I don't know what made the other ones crack, but it'll like just start flaking off and the wood will show through and I do not like that. So um, I use that. Uh, and then I, I actually really like Simply Simmons and this is just another like student grade brush, but these are what I use for my workshops. And this is one of my brushes that I have been using for years and years and years. And I think they're they're enamel coated too. Um, they're not solid plastic handles, these ones, but this handle is held up forever. And the bristles have been doing great and the, they don't like fall out or anything. So I'm a big fan of those. Um, so mostly round brushes, these like medium, they're like between six and eight size, size six and size eight. Um, I use for most of my smaller paintings. Uh, most of my flowers and my leaves and my succulents and everything I do with round brushes. Every once in a while I'll use a liner. So this is like a really nasty old brush. I don't even know what brand it is because it's worn off, but it's like a shorter sort of a liner brush. Um, so I use a liner brush for some details and then I have some larger brushes. So same thing, um, round, round. This one is Zen brand that I just got recently for the huge painting. If you guys have seen on my, um, on my Instagram, I did like this really big four by four, uh, flower floral painting. And I got this big round guy to, to sort of like simulate, not simulate, but get that same look of my brush strokes that I get on my smaller scale, um, on a, like a huge canvas. So I just needed to up my brush size so that I could still do like single strokes for certain elements. Um, yeah, so those are the brushes. And then I use a flat brush. Um, this is American Painter brand, um, and it's held up fine for me. Grumbrocker Academy brand. Um, yeah, so I just use these to paint my base coats, my flat brushes. I don't really I have these filberts here. I really have not used filberts in ages. Um, but yeah, nothing super fancy or super expensive, and they tend to hold up for quite a while if the, the coating doesn't split off of the handle. Um, let me just make sure. Okay, so Rihanna Torres Photo asks, do you prefer Photoshop or Illustrator to edit your pattern? So um, I use both. So it just depends on what I'm trying to accomplish with my pattern. Illustrator, generally, I, uh, I love it because you can like change colors infinitely and it doesn't it's so easy to change your color palette completely um, because you just like click, 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 change, 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 because it's all vector. And so I'll do simple motifs and paint them and then I'll translate them into vector and then I'll arrange them for more flat patterns that are just like solid areas. I know you can do textures in Illustrator. I just haven't really gotten good at that and that's not necessarily what I've used it for. Um, so any sort of flat patterns, or, Illust or, or Illustrator, and then Photoshop, I've been using more recently to get more of that painterly look in my patterns. So I'll just get a piece of paper and I'll paint individual elements. So I'll just paint a bunch of leaves with space in between them and I'll paint a bunch of flowers and then I'll scan them in and then I'll like isolate them in Photoshop, bring them over onto a new file and then like go in and lay them out in my pattern. So I don't paint the pattern as is like all together on the piece of paper and scan it. I paint the elements and then I use Photoshop to kind of layer them in. And um, yeah, so it works great for me that way. And I've, I would say more recently, I'm getting more into using a very painterly look in the patterns that I've been doing. And I love that. They look like more straight out of my original paintings. Um, 
Okay, so then Inky Binky says, on average, how long does it take you to create a smaller piece? Um, it depends. Uh, it, like, I can do, like, mini ones in, like, if I paint a set of minis, like, often I'll do, like, three or four of them all together. I can do that in about four hours, get, like, all of them done. So, like, about a day's work. Um, it takes a while to... I paint the canvases um, for my minis all the way um, like a solid color so you can see it like goes all the way oh the lights so bright but I'll paint the entire thing all the way around to the back edge and so then that has to dry so that takes a while but then um, I can kind of bust the smaller ones out more quickly just because those are like looser and more fluid um, if I'm doing something that I'm not sure about or I'm trying something new it takes me longer to do it um let's see so Abdullah asks what do you paint mostly so I mostly paint florals that's my big thing I paint lots and lots and lots of flowers and sometimes people um mixed in there a little bit but uh they're in my garden girls they're mostly like disguised by a bunch of flowers covering up most of them so you just see their arms but yes, I love flowers. Yeah, you're welcome for answering. Um, let's see, so Lisa's Balcony says, do you work on the color palette before starting your final artworks? That's a really good question. So I've done it both ways. Um, when I first launched my website, I um, had a collection of paintings that were all butterfly paintings. That uh, was the initial collection that I launched. <clears throat> And I was kind of taking a break from flowers and wanting to try something new. And those, I found because they were very, very patternistic. That's not a word, but I use it anyway. They were very, very patternistic paintings. So it took all my brain power to organically come up with the patterns that were in my paintings that I couldn't think about colors at the same time. And so I, I like made some really ugly paintings at first because I was like trying to come up with my color palette on the fly and it just wasn't working out. So I pre-mixed all my colors for those particular paintings. Um, so I just like went in and like found mostly on Pinterest. I get a lot of my color inspiration from Pinterest. Um, and then I just was like mixed to match and I mixed like a color palette of say like five or six colors and then I would only use those colors in my painting and that was great it was really liberating so that I knew I was using colors that I really liked and they looked good together but I didn't have to make them on the fly while I was making all these other decisions in my paintings um so but now I, so after I did that for a while I started feeling constrained by that and so then I decided to be way more free flowing in how I decide my colors. I'll often have a photo, like an interior photo or a photo off of Pinterest um, of like, you know, those photos where they have a lot of like paint pans or paint like lids to paint buckets or something. So it'll be a, like a color palette in the photo. So I'll use some of those as inspiration. I don't, I generally don't work like I'm going to use every single color they use. I'll look at those photos and say like, what does my painting need? Aha, that one. And then I'll, I'll make it. Um, okay, let's see. Just to make sure you use acrylics. Yes, I do use acrylics. Um, I have done oil painting and I have done watercolor painting um, in my time. <laughs> no, but uh, right now I'm pretty much exclusively acrylics for everything that you see. Yay, flower love. Um... How did you work on choosing a color palette that represents your voice? Uh, Loy Ling, I think that, I hope I said your name right, asks. Um, gosh, you know what's funny is that a lot of people say, like, they'll look at my paintings, and I, and I realize this now at this point, that, like, I have a certain color palette that's distinctively my style. I really didn't intentionally do that. I just picked colors that I loved together. Um, I just picked the colors and still I don't necessarily say like this is my color palette. I just have colors that I love and I'll try to incorporate new ones here and there but um, yeah it just is what makes me happy basically. So I would look at Anthropology's website a lot and like get ideas from their homewares or from their clothing just because like who doesn't look at anthropology and go like, ah, when they like look at their things. And usually, um, 
It's just because it's great color combos or shapes, colors and shapes. So for a while I was, I had to get really, um, more focused on like, why do I like that thing when I'm seeing it? Cause I would look at people's paintings back when I was still like trying to find my style and my voice a little bit more. I would look at people's paintings and I would just go, Oh, I love that. And then I would move on. But I had to slow myself down and say like, what do I really, really love about their painting and try to like pinpoint it so that I could know, oh, I can recreate that or not like copy them, but like try to accomplish something similar in my work. Um, and so now I'm way more attuned to like, oh yeah, that has a great mixture of like muted colors and really intense colors paired together. Like I think that's one thing I love about Luli Wallace's work. And if you don't know her, go look her up. It's Luli, it's like Julie but with an L. Um, she was one of my huge inspirations and still is, especially when I was starting out because she was also a pattern designer and a painter. Um, and she just does that so well. She gets really intense colors and really interesting neutrals mixed together. And I, I try to do similar things in my work too. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, mostly it's just colors that make me happy and, um, just on a, like a visceral level, I go, ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> and sometimes I'll have a feeling like I really want these to be sort of tropically feeling. So I'll try to aim for those, or I want these to be a little bit more muted, which I haven't been super successful at, but I did do, um, some paintings that are, were for a specific person's home. And so she had a color palette and she wanted more limited colors, more muted. And so that was a great challenge. So I was able to you know, have that reference or that frame of, um, direction to kind of help me choose my colors. Um, awesome. Good, good, good. I'm glad that that answers your questions. Um, let's see. So Pink Popsicle Studio asked, do you use photographs to paint from? Um, I do for individual elements of my paintings. Um, my paintings are kind of a mix. They are very, um, they're like a conglomeration, I guess you could say, of sort of abstracted stylistic flowers that I've come up with that are just kind of my flowers that I paint. Like these guys, um, I, I'll just keep pulling down this one painting as my example. So these guys, I just kind of developed because I loved anemones and they're really dark centers, but I kind of just came up with a way of painting a dark centered flower that's not really a particular flower anymore. It's just sort of my flower. Um, but for things more like proteas or proteas, I think you might say them, um, or other like specific, if a client asks for a specific type of flower in their painting, I'll definitely go and I'll look up photos of that type of flower and then try to translate it like into a more abstract, expressive, patterned sort of a way. Um, so yeah, that's, that's generally, I, it's a, a, a big, blah, blah, blah. It's a big mixture. So sometimes I am looking directly at a photo and saying, how do the colors go on that flower? Other times I'm just freehanding and kind of doing like a flower from my like mental repertoire of flowers that I have come up with. Um, so I have two minutes remaining on the time here. I would love to keep going. So I will restart the video once it, it closes out guys and I'll save that video and then I'll come back and we can keep chatting if you want to. Um, yeah, you're welcome. Loy Lang. I think I said it right. <laughs> uh, Oh, and so the artist's name was Luli with an L, L-U-L-I-E, and then it's Wallace, W-A-L-L-A-C-E, I think it is. Yeah, go check out her work. Actually, I bought one of her paintings a, like a year or two ago, and it was like the first original painting that I bought, and I love it, love it. Okay, so we're down to like 50 seconds. So let's see, what is my favorite color? I think it's blue. Um, you know what, my favorite color is coral. I use blue quite a bit in my paintings, but actually like my shirt color, this is my favorite color. And turquoise, it's kind of a tie, but coral I think. <laughs> good, 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 I'm so glad that you are taking notes, Melissa. <laughs> I feel like an, a teacher. Um, okay, I'm gonna end it here and then I'll come back and if any of you guys want to keep chatting, I will keep going. Okay. See you later.